capital and financial accounts. As uh, we said, it is, uh, we talked about it already. And there are, uh, there are four major components uh, like direct investment, portfolio investment, financial derivatives, and miscellaneous or other categories. Two of them, two of these components are major and they play a very uh, critical role. First is direct investment. Second one is portfolio investment. Okay. And remember, uh, there's this, these assets, financial assets. You remember when we talk about uh, the financial account, we talk about transfer of financial assets, okay? Cap capital inflows and uh, capital outflows. So all the financial assets that are being traded, they can be categorized as government, or public versus private. Okay. It can be owned by a government entity. It can be publicly traded. Okay, so if it is enlisted in a stock market is publicly traded. If it is not enlisted in a stock market, it is private asset, okay? So I, I, I'm sure you are familiar with these uh, concepts. So as I said, it can be because of the, depending on the ownership, nature of the ownership, it can be public, it can be private. Uh, and the, the, the maturity, the, the, the lifespan of an asset, it also varies. So um, first, let's talk about uh, foreign direct investment. This is the net balance of capital dispersed from and into a country for the purpose of exerting control over assets. Okay. This term is important, control over assets. So uh, as the term refers, we consider large investments. Say for example, India is for example, India is developing a power plant, okay? And Australia invests in that project. An Australian firm invests in that project. If the Australian firm owns at least 10% of that Indian power plant, that is an example of Australian investment or Australian direct investment in India. If it is less than 10%, it is not considered a direct investment. It is considered as a portfolio investment, okay, which is the next component. So direct investment is a very important part of financial account. Especially, we see large direct investment from uh, advanced economies to the emerging and development uh, developing countries. In the recent past, China has emerged as a major, uh, as, as a country with major direct investments. Okay? So it has large investments in countries like, um, in many countries in Africa and in, in, in South Asia, like Sri Lanka and uh, Nepal, okay? So whenever we are talking about direct investment, there are two important uh, uh, points which has which have drawn uh, controversy and uh, uh, heated debate in, in the in the policy arena and in and, and among the academics. One is related to control, and the other is related to profit. So, whenever people are divided, whether allowing foreigners to own domestic resources, domestic power plants, whether it is a good thing or bad thing, okay? Because uh, there are examples where mm, ownership of uh, domestic assets by foreigners uh, has created a problem like political issues and, and things like that. So I'm not going to mm, uh, discuss these things into a greater detail, but uh, please go through the textbook. And the bottom line is, Ownership of, uh, of 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 uh, assets, ownership of uh, foreign ownership is is always an important thing. 
And similarly, the distribution of profit. Okay. So whenever in the previous example of Australian investment in India, whenever uh, there is a direct foreign direct investment, uh, the foreign owners, in this case, the Australian firm is making profit based on Indian workers' labor. Okay, so in that in that example, uh, in that Indian power plant, Indian workers are working. They are generating the profit. And to what extent the Australian farm can extract that profit and bring it back from India to Australia? And to what extent, to, uh, and what part of that profit should be reinvested in India? These are the questions. Okay. These are mostly political questions and debate, there are debates around it, okay? And I'm telling you, there is no straight solution. There is no solution. People are divided. Uh, but these are the topics that we discuss, okay? Uh, arguments are there. I just want you to be familiar with them. Okay. Uh, as I said, if the net balance of capital that flows in and out of a country uh, does not reach the threshold of 10%. It is not considered a direct investment, rather it is considered as a portfolio investment. So when, whenever we're talking about portfolio investment, ownership of control is less important. More important thing is rate of return. Okay, And there is also also debate associated with it, what extent uh, profit generated from this kind of portfolio investment should be reinvested in the country, in the host country, or to what extent it should be the, the, the investor can have access to that profit. These are, these are the debates, okay. Now, let's have a look at the US financial accounts. As we can see that um, net direct investment, this is represented by the blue line and the black line is uh, represents net portfolio investment. And as we can see that net direct investment from the USA, uh, it is relatively stable compared to net portfolio investment. Okay, so a net portfolio investment it increased uh, gradually between uh, 1985 and, mm, and, and, and the mid or the late 2000s, although there were some spikes here, but it fell sharply between uh, 2007 and 2008, and then gradually it increased. So this is the period of uh, global financial crisis. Uh, we're not going into the detailed discussion but if you're interested, you can, uh, for, for, for long discussion, you can always uh, look at this appendix. The bottom line is, for the United States, net direct investment has been relatively stable. 